What's up Winter Royale Grinders and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Cody and today we're going to be going over the best drop spots for great loot, great rotations, and easy wins. Get that W. If you want to dominate in Fortnite events and win thousands of dollars in prize money, you need to be able to perfect your drop. Landings are one of the most important aspects of pro level gameplay. Not only does your landing get you loot and possibly some early game points through kills, but it also determines how the rest of your game will play out. If you have a great drop spot with good rotations, you're set to move towards the end game with ease. But if you go on the edge and you have no way of getting into the next zone, your game is just not going to go the way that you want it to. The same goes for not having sufficient loot to battle it out in the end game. So let's get into the best drop spots and why these spots are guaranteed to increase your chances of earning the victory royale. Now before we dive in, if you want to learn the ins and outs of these drop spots, check out ProGuides.com where we have the best coaches in the world. Sign up for our membership today and get exclusive access to master courses by players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to go more in depth and explore all the different aspects of competitive gameplay that you need to know to succeed, go to our ProGuides website, be sure to sign up and start improving rapidly today. First up, we have a spot that is used very little by many players, mainly because they don't even know that it exists. This is because this area has a lot of secret aspects that you must know in order to make it effective, and it's located in a spot that really isn't dropped at too often. Once you've learned it, by the end of this section, you'll know exactly how to land here and do so with great map knowledge. This area is located close to Sweaty Sands on tile A3. Some of its most distinctive aspects are seven chest spawns, great cover within the main building, and lots of good high ground choke points. These are essentially locations that can be great for scanning the area and looking for unsuspecting opponents to laser, take them down with a medium to long range weapon like the AR. One very important thing to keep in mind when dropping here is to land on the very top of the stone castle near the edge when you are dropping. Then drop down onto the chest that is located on the edge of the castle. If you ever find yourself coming short and missing the spot you intended to drop on, don't worry as you'll be able to loot the area around the castle as it has multiple weapon spawns and even chest spawns which can give you an advantage if you're ever landing on other players. The chest spawns are generally located in the mini buildings around the perimeter of the castle. Next, make sure you learn all of the chest spawns. This is a key tip that'll apply to every spot we mention in the video today. Knowing where chests are located is extremely important as this will make your looting process very efficient and also give you a good idea of loot paths that you can take when opponents are nearby. One great thing about Chapter 2 is that chest spawns have a 100% spawn chance, meaning that there will always be a chest in the same place as it was last game. That's pretty cool. Besides great loot, Tifu's Fort is an unnamed location that is usually uncontested and also full of materials. You can find tons of stone and wood just by farming the walls of the castle, plus the other objects laying around. You can get even more stone and metal once you start rotating out of this area. Speaking of rotation, the main path you want to take for rotating out is going to consist of moving towards the beach where you'll find some extra crates and some more chests in them. These crates give metal as well as some extra loot. Once you've done a quick loot of this area, you'll want to either use the water on the edge for a quick rotation if the circle is on that side of the map, or you want to run across the map if your zone is on the other side. Lucky for you, you're on the edge, meaning that you'll be the very last player rotating if you time it right. Timing is everything, so make sure you're not leaving too late to the point that the storm's gonna just deal too much damage, but also not too early where you're gonna find these players lasering you from behind. Fort Crumpet offers great loot for an unnamed location that is rarely dropped at. It also provides lots of materials and fishing poles which you'll definitely need in order to survive. Don't forget to quickly fish if you have time and gather some green or purple fish for health. This is a great way to take advantage of its location next to the water. Next up, we have quite possibly one of the most unknown locations in Fortnite. This is called Pristine Point and is close to Steamy Stacks, but it's in a location where most players who land Steamy will not even look at since they have to rotate out. The exact location is across the river from Steamy where the broken houses and hills are located. This location features three broken houses which have loot spawns and chest spawns, but most notably it has access to lots of water routes and fishing areas, which is what this drop spot will mainly rely on. The benefit to dropping pristine is that you get good loot with almost zero chances of actually running into other players. You get to loot an entire area as well as farm mats and fish without having to really worry about getting pushed or caught in a fight. You may however hear fighting coming from Steamy. But as mentioned before, these players will almost never go to your area as it's moving away from the center of the map and it's a decrease in the high ground. 
The only time you'll ever have to worry about opponents is in the unlikely manner that the circle ends up putting you directly in between Steamy and its circumference, aka the edge. We recommend landing first at the broken house at the very edge of the shore. This is just in case you find yourself in a bad situation where you need an exit route. The way it'll benefit you is the back route that you can take by dropping down the side of the mountain and then swimming around the edges of the landscape, making it hard for your opponent to keep track of where you're running. Now another great thing about Pristine is the abundance of materials that you'll find around you. This location features lots of wooden trees and stone hedges which are scattered throughout. The broken houses also have some metal in them, including cars and other metallic objects, which can be broken for a good amount of metal. Once you've looted this entire area and gotten as many materials as you can, you'll want to find a fishing pole and go fishing in the river in between Steamy Stacks and Pristine Point. This area has lots of fishing zones that you can get fish from safely. Spend a good amount of time on fishing as it can give you extremely good weapons and consumable fish that can save you for the late game or even if you're caught in the storm. Finally, let's talk about rotations for Pristine. Alongside the river, there is a boat location that you can use to get a quick rotation. You should generally drive this boat out into the edge of the map where the main body of water is, and then circle around the map to the closest point to the next zone. This will limit your chances of being shot at by opponents as most people aren't on the edge of the map, and the speed boost and protection from the boat will both help ward off opponents and make dodging those shots even easier. Pristine Point is a great drop location for players who like to play very safe and distant from their enemies. It features good material output, a strong fishing environment, and a good opportunity for escaping and rotating using the bodies of water located all around. Get on that boat and get on out! We suggest landing here if your goal is to survive until the end game, which is usually what it should be. Last but not least, we have a spot that is also secluded, but this time we chose one that isn't on the edge of the map. The benefit to this spot is that you'll have a much easier time rotating to the next circle as the RNG is reduced due to your position. On the downside, the chances of other players discovering this area could be higher, but as of right now, it's very underrated and unknown by the majority of pro players. The barracks are located north of Lazy Lake on Tile 5F and feature some really, really good loot. Also, there's an abundance of materials to farm. This is perhaps one of the key features of this spot as you'll be able to leave with maximum wood, stone, and metal. The metal buildings and fencings are more than enough to max out your metal, and there are tons of trees and stone hedges located all around the perimeter of the area. Once you're done looting, you can walk alongside the outskirts and farm trees and stone for more wood and brick. The barracks features a similar style to the outposts back when planes were in the game. These are metal circular structured buildings with lots of chests and loot spawns inside. They're also great for cover and boxing up. The most interesting aspect of gameplay that comes with landing here is the fact that you're very close to the center of the map, meaning that your RNG for movement will be very low. The zones that approach you will most likely have a relatively close distance to you and they will oftentimes be on you which gives you lots of time to loot up and get ready. The metal barracks are also phenomenal for boxing up as they can be broken and rebuilt so that you don't waste any materials. We suggest maxing out and then using the remainder of the metal to build your own base and tunnels so that you can edit and use them to move. Oftentimes, you'll find the zone being very close to you, but not necessarily on top of you. You can use a tunneling technique to reduce the distance while staying under cover, and you can do so by using materials that are around you, such as metal and wood. A lot of times you can actually tunnel from one tree to another with wood and can serve almost 100% of your mats as you break them and tunnel while you go to the next tree. Another spotlight feature of the barracks is the fishing areas that are located on the rivers close to the drop spot. Finding a fishing pole and gathering those fishies is very useful for those endgame fights. Also, you're gonna have a very good chance of finding some awesome loot. You gotta check this place out. The EGO barracks is a great spot for secluded landing that won't be too far from the next zone. More importantly, the metal structures and abundance of materials will be more than enough to max you out and provide for easy tunneling rotations. There's also great fishing spots located all around, and you'll almost always have an easy rotation to the next circle. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed. Comment down below what you thought and what you'd like to see next. We strive to bring you guys daily quality content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you to the video. Thanks for watching. Once again, it's your host Cody. You can follow me on Instagram at Coco Medler. Are you cuckoo for the Coco Puffs? Let me know, dude. Stay positive, stay practicing, and see you on the next one.